on all the signs we have promoting this week of remembrance, the question is posed, what would Dr. King do if he were here today? So to answer that question, I read his memoir, Why We Can't Wait. Some people might say that we have a black president and that Dr. King would not need to do anything if he were here today, that all our problems are solved. But in, 19, in the 1960s, the issue was not just black and white relations, nor is it the issue today. In his letter from a Birmingham jail, Dr. King told his fellow clergymen that he was in Birmingham because injustice is in Birmingham. And injustice is still here today. According to the World Justice Report's Rule of Law Index, among higher income nations, the United States, the United States ranks last in the access to civil justice category and second to last in the fundamental rights category. Now, to be fair, among all countries, in the United States does better than average in all categories. But when has this country's goal ever been to be just better than average? When hearing statistics like this, your response should not be, well, we are better, at least we're better than Saudi Arabia, but rather it should be why Sweden and not us, or even better, why are we perfect? Because even if you have the highest F in the class, you're still failing. And <laughs> And as long as there is injustice here, we are failing. So to answer the question that has been posed to us, Dr. King would fight injustice nonviolently if he were still here today. We've heard a lot of talk recently about Second Amendment remedies, but Dr. King was a fan of First Amendment remedies. When you use a gun to end a conversation, you end the conversation. But when you have speeches and sermons, protests and marches, rallies, write books and essays like Dr. King did. You seek justice and reconciliation, not victory. Dr. King told us that nonviolence and love is the sword that heals. But unfortunately, Dr. King is no longer with us. So what now? It seems that since his death, America has been waiting for Superman to pick up his dream. But like the poet Gil Scott Heron reminds us, ain't no such thing as a Superman. Dr. King was no Superman. He had his vices and imperfections just like you or myself. But more importantly, he had a group of people around him to help him. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference had 85 affiliate organizations when he was in Birmingham. He wasn't a Superman, but he had a super group. I've been to the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee, where Dr. King was shot and killed. It's now a beautiful museum remembering the Civil Rights Movement. And I can tell you the dream did not die that I was in, nor is it waiting for Superman. Instead, the dream is waiting for us to understand ain't no such thing as a Superman. To understand that if we're gonna win, we've gotta get together, stay together, be together, stick together. None of us have much power individually, but there is power in numbers. And with great power comes great responsibility. As Dr. King says, this is not power for power's sake, but power that is moral, that is right, and that is good. When people criticize the United States, as I have done today, we often sound accusative or ungrateful for what we have. But Davis Guggenheim, the director of the documentary Waiting for Superman says, it's not about making you feel guilty. It's about making you think, and maybe, after all of that, opening your heart and rousing you to action. I know that it's a blessing to live in the United States, but I also know that it can be worse is not an acceptable answer to why isn't it better. Even if there is justice for 99% of all Americans, that 1% of injustice is too much. Like Dr. King says, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever effect affects one directly affects all indirectly. 
I chose not to speak of specific injustices in America today because when talking about one group, people tend to ask, well, what about this group or that group? As if justice for one group excludes justice for another. But in fact, justice, include, justice for one group includes justice for the other. Because a house divided against itself cannot stand. Jesse Jackson said that Dr. King's focus was not merely black and white, it was not merely racial. It was the ethical challenge of our memory. In his book, Why We Can't Wait, Dr. King called for a Bill of Rights for the disadvantaged. Not just black people or poor people, but for disadvantaged people. I also chose not to speak about specifics because I cannot make you understand what it feels to be black in America, just like I cannot understand how it feels to be a woman or a Muslim or non-gender conformed. We cannot understand the specifics, but the specifics do not apply to us. But we all can understand injustice, no matter of race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, or any other social description. We all can understand that it must be made right. In his letter from a, doc from a Birmingham jail, Dr. Kane said, in any nonviolent campaign, there are four basic steps. Collection of the facts to determine whether injustices exist, negotiation, self purification and direct action. I have challenged myself to start this process and educate myself and collect facts and determine where injustice exists. And I challenge you all to do the same. A great place to start is the American Civil Liberties Union's website where they list 15 key issues. On that website, you can read different articles and read about different legislations and Supreme Court cases dealing with the different issues. And when studying, when you're not studying, you don't stumble upon instead, instead of just marking humor, you can also mark activism and liberties and rights. You can read Why We Can't Wait. You can even look at my copy. These are all simple steps I have taken to better educate myself. We are all here tonight because we admire Dr. King. But the Reverend Jesse Jackson calls us to do more. Don't just admire Dr. King, he says. Follow him. Don't just remember him one day of the year. Let your actions honor him every day of the year. Do justice, he says. Love mercy. Because Dr. King is not with us physically, it is our responsibility to keep this spirit alive. We are all the guardians of his legacy. Considering the setting of this vigil, I wanted to end with a verse from the Bible. Regardless of your opinion of Christianity in particular, or religion in general. I hope that this particular verse resonates with you. So turn with me, if you will, to the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 24. Say it then, yeah. I'm just going. <laughs> but the prophet Amos tells us, let justice roll down as the waters, and righteousness as a mighty stream. Thank you, and God bless.